I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't easy. In fact, it was really, really tough. But doing CBT changed my life. That's not to say that I'm demon-free and levitating above you all in a blissed-out state of serenity and zen. Far from it. But at least I've got the tools now to minimize the damage. Tools that I've been able to use again and again for wildly diverse needs. It seems we're our own worst enemy. There's a voice in our heads that we're trapped with for our entire life, and it's a right horrible piece of work. If we spoke to other people the way we do to ourselves, we'd get our nose broken, and for good reason. And this is what CBT tries to do. Figure out the nature of our particular thinking patterns and the root issues creating them, and then hijack the internal dialogue with some home truths. It's caveman's fault. We're not designed to be happy, we're designed to survive. And most of our time as a species on this planet has been spent as hunter-gatherers. Drummers are still catching up. With modern humans, a very, very recent arrival on the world stage. That voice in your head telling you to be scared, telling you that you can't do something or that you shouldn't, or what if it goes wrong, how will I survive then? That's the old selfish gene trying to keep you alive in the long grass. Stay safe and don't go chasing rainbows. There's probably a lion there waiting to rip your ribcage out. Unfortunately, there's absolutely nothing we can do about this. It's just the way we're wired. And the problem gets worse when you spend your entire life getting the positive vibe smashed out of you by others. Parents, teachers, bullies, bosses, society, or the media. It's inevitable that we're tangled up messes of insecurity, fear, frustration, and anger. All we can do is understand the forces at play, rediscover our true selves, and know how to keep that damn internal asshole in check. Mindset is often the invisible cause behind many other problems in our lives. In relationships, work life, finances, health, not always, but it's definitely a factor. We back out of speaking up at work. We continue to drink more than we should. We comfort shop. We lash out and regret it. We avoid risks. But this annoying, life-diminishing baggage can be weeded out. You'd be amazed how much opens up for you once you get out of your own damn way. At the root of it all is, well, a root. Each of us has our own root issues. Buried deep within our past, and just like the root of a tree, that shit is clinging on tight and ain't going nowhere. Confronting it is terrifying, but you have to dig. Linda would ask me streams of questions which walked backwards towards my root issues, such as, what happened? How did that make you feel? Why was that? And if that was true, what would that mean? And so on. After a few sessions, I saw that I was always ending up at the same point. I had chronically low self-esteem. All the other stuff, this bloke made me look weak, or this situation was loaded against me, was a mere cover-up for the throbbing, raw nerve underlying it all. I was painfully insecure, and real life kept touching that nerve. After a while, I could see it clearly affecting everyday situations, and I was able to start rolling my eyes at it instead of reacting but that took some time and effort. I did CBT every week for a year, and there's absolutely no way I can substitute that for a quick digression in this book. But some of the points that resonated the most with me are as follows. Break the loop. If you try too hard, people will avoid you. If you're all shy and dainty, no one will notice you. If you're constantly criticizing, no one will listen to you. People treat us based on how we behave, regardless of our reasons. It's not everyone else's job to know the inner workings of your issues or the backstory to your poor life. They've got their own shit going on. It's your job to handle your baggage. Sad, but true. I know that the loud, coked-up bloke in the pub is only coked up and overcompensating with mental levels of bravado because he's socially anxious. I know that I can feel sorry for him all I want, but chances are, I'm probably just going to avoid and ignore him because it's bloody irritating. His behavior will have the opposite effect to what he wants. Our thoughts inform our behavior, and our behavior determines how other people react to us. And that reaction then confirms our thoughts about ourselves. It's a loop. If you feel socially anxious, as everyone does, you might end up getting a little too drunk or trying a little too hard to make people like you. And when they back away, It will just confirm for you that you are not likable and people suck. You need to break the loop. It's so hard, but usually it's the things we think are helping us that are making it worse. Substances, trying to impress, being a know-it-all, being a hard man, shyness, 
Stop. Be vulnerable. Be stupid. Be humble. Be interested in others. Chill out and let your damn guard down. You'll find it makes everyone feel more relaxed and people will gravitate towards you like moths to a bulb. Why? Because everyone is dealing with their own versions of the above and when someone comes along who's just cool, it's a breather for everyone. Keep doing this and a new loop of thought, behavior, reaction will form real quick. A much more positive one for you and everyone else. Dig deep. Whatever that horrible little issue is that's fucking everything up for you, find it. You probably already know what it is, but I think that this is something that needs assistance. It's terrifying confronting our deepest fears, most of which are deeply rooted in childhood trauma, but trust me, when you revisit that trauma as an adult, it's not as scary as you might think. More than likely, you'll feel a warm sense of relief to have finally looked it bravely in the face and you'll have an overwhelming amount of sympathy and love for your poor younger self who's been carrying that scar ever since. It takes courage to do this, and I know the thought of it is beyond the pale for most, but it's the best thing you will ever do for yourself. Let that shit go, man. It's all in your head. Sorry to burst your bubble, but no one is thinking about you. Don't worry about what other people might think of you, because they won't. People will comment, oh, people love to comment. I'm a musician, I know all about that one. But ultimately, they don't really care. They're distracted with their kids, their deadlines, their problems. They're not thinking about you. Don't be sad, this is great news. You are free to do whatever the fuck you want. Safe in the knowledge that getting anyone to give the remotest of shits will be the hard part. For years, I was paralyzed in social settings, believing that everyone was judging me and that they could all see through my thinly veiled disguise. Nope. Absolutely everyone else in the room was too busy feeling the same way about themselves. Which is why, when you drop your bullshit and just start being open and normal, everyone wants to be your mate. Realizing that everyone else in the room is fighting battles you can't see makes it easier for you to turn your fears into empathy, and that'll make for a much better look. It's all relative, man. If all you focus on is what you don't have, you'll be depressed forever. It's important to aim high, but it's also vital to count your blessings now and again and keep yourself in check too. I wanted the big record deal, to buy my parents a house, to tour the world, to make a classic album, to make a difference. Lofty goals. And I worked hard for them. But along the way, I lost sight of what I already had. Good health, loving parents, amazing friends, a band, a talent, And I wasn't starving. Many people yearn for the items on that list, and yet here I was, flippantly ignoring them all. Most of us in the West today, even the poorest, enjoy living standards higher than even royalty knew not so long ago. That's not to say we don't have a lot of work to do, but it's important to recognize progress made and triumphs won too. Otherwise, you get depressed, and then you get slow, and then we're back to that loop again. See where you are in the broader picture. If you're reading this book, you're probably somewhere near the middle of the comfiness curve. It's important to remind yourself of that before you get consumed by a sense of inadequacy and meaninglessness. More on that to come. The important thing with all of this is practice. As a musician, I know about practice. Don't start big, start small. But be consistent. A little every day. For me, Once I'd acknowledged my core issues and seen the daft, cyclical nature of my behavior, it was time to apply it out there in the big bad world. This is terrifying. Dropping my guard, potentially exposing myself as weak and stupid and vulnerable in front of everyone was my deepest fear. I decided that the next time some dude talked to Kat and I felt threatened, I was going to join the conversation. Not in a cockish way, I was going to be unassuming, cool with the guy, and not let myself regress into that weird version of myself that I hated. I failed the first few times. My fears and low self-esteem got the better of me. But practice does make perfect, and before long, it was my new normal behavior. And do you know what? Nothing bad happened. Only good. I made more friends. The guys I thought were threats started to feel threatened by me and my desirably calm, self-depreciating openness. And for Kat, nights out with James became a thing she wanted more, not less. It's obvious and simple when you think about it, 
but we're all so enchained by these deeply rooted issues that it seems impossible to ever overcome them. It's not. Trust me. Your issues may be worse than mine, and the scale of the trauma may be unspeakable, but help is out there, and old habits can be changed. Can you imagine if every child had CBT in school? Our whole society would be so different. Maybe it's about time we replaced religious studies with CBT. Don't be held hostage by these demons anymore, dear reader. They may have taken your past, but do not let them take your future. As I said, I had a reason to go to CBT. I had something that meant more to me than the fear of facing my fears. What means more to you?